Welcome back, my fellow poets, to another Spooky Saturday video. To those of you who stumble across my content for the first time, I am your narrator, Paranormal Poet, and I narrate true paranormal scary stories who focuses more on atmosphere rather than visual aid to terrify you. So sit back, relax, and step into the world of the unknown. If the paranormal has taught us anything, it's that it only teaches us what we're supposed to know. The rest we have to figure out ourselves. Some of us choose not to believe it. What was it they say? Ignorance is bliss. If that's what they want, all power to them. But some of those skeptics get thrust into the world of the paranormal. That's when opinions and beliefs change. Tonight, I bring you two encounters that had both rethink their stance on the otherworldly. Let's find out what happened. Story 1 Hello, paranormal poet. For privacy's sake, my name is Sadie. And this experience I had years back has me shaken even as I type this out. We begin on my parents' rural property in Canada. It was a decently sized property with lots of room to run around and explore, tempting to more than a few eager teenagers who love to play spotlight, basically just hide and seek with a high lumen flashlight, making it feel more spooky being able to tread quietly at night gave us all a wonderful thrill. That night, all my cousins stopped over to hang out with us. Upon gathering to give us the rules of the game, we were told to have a buddy in order to ensure proper safety since it was already 7pm and starting to get dark out. The rules were set along with the perimeter, and we all began running to our hiding spots. Me and a cousin of mine ran off into the forested part of the property. Somewhere along the way, both her and I stopped to walk to lessen the chance of them finding us through our steps. That's when something intriguing caught my eye. It looked to be an old wooden shack. Its outside paneling was rotting and deteriorating, but the shack seemed like it was stable enough. Both of us looked at each other as curiosity took over us and instinctively began walking to the stairs leaning up to the door of the shack. And when we made it to the landing, I turned around to scan the tree line with my phone light. That's when I noticed a metal gate lying on the ground. A rusted gate. It looked like it had been there for so long. Suddenly. I felt the sensation of a rope go around my waist. I thought I was going crazy until my cousin looked down and reacted exactly as I did. Looking back, we saw no one in sight. We gasped and freaked out. We didn't care about the game. We had to tell someone what we experienced. We peeled out of there, running back to find another member of my family to check out the matter. The next morning, after a sleepless night, I asked my dad what that old shack was. He proceeds to tell me that years ago, the previous owner was a rancher. The gate leading to the cow shed was where he would manage and sometimes lasso the cows for branding and other various purposes. Perhaps the rancher hasn't relieved himself of his cattle roping duties just yet. Whether the paranormal is undeniably real or not, nothing and no one will take away the fear I experienced that night. That was terrifying. Story 2 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Brandon, and this experience I had while leisurely swimming has forever changed my stance on the supernatural altogether. This all started in June of 2011. I was out with a couple of friends that day, just hitting up the well-known spots in town. The day was warm and the sun was at a reasonable spot in the sky, not too scorching hot, 
keep in mind we live in Montana. Our weather can be unpredictable at times. Anyway, after a while in town and getting a bite to eat, some of my friends parted ways and went off to finish the rest of their day, while me and a buddy of mine decided to hit up a spot where we could go for a quick dip in the lake. We decided on Pyramid Lake. I had heard it was a lovely spot to take a swim, burn off some of the calories we inevitably gained, so we said why not and drove in that direction. Upon making it to the lake, I got a noticeable, strange feeling looking out over the water. A sense of dread. This caught me by surprise. I brushed it off and made my way down to the shore of the lake. It was truly a marvel to see. The weather was still holding up and the moment couldn't have been any more perfect. I got in my swim trunks and briskly made my way in. Feeling the shock of the cold encouraged me to jump in and fully submerge my body and enjoy its benefits. It was at this time where I thought about doing some freestyle strokes just so I can keep warm. So I began swimming out a little ways. This is when the nightmare truly began for me. I swam about a quarter of the distance of the lake when I felt my hand hit something. It was soft and felt like it had flesh to it. This was unnerving to say the least and brought me back to when I was lifeguarding. So instinct and training kicked in as I went to look at who could have been there. And that's when I got the scare of my life when under the water, I saw the undeniable face of a child. Something about the way the child looked at me was sinister. That's when it let out a terrifying cry. I was underwater, but I felt like I could hear the cries in my head even louder. I had enough and swam as fast as I could out of there. I got to the shore where my buddy had seen me struggling to compose myself. Without explaining, I grabbed my things and convinced him to leave the lake. To this day, I haven't gone back. I then remembered the legend of the water babies. The natives called them Pakniwat in their native language, a spirit of babies or children that were drowned as a result of being malformed or premature at birth, mainly told by the Paiute tribe in the area, often urging locals to stay away, and if not, heed the sound of their cries as your final warning as once you swim in those waters alone, you are at the mercy of them. Fortunately, I made it out of there alive, but that sound will haunt me forever, along with those eyes, lifeless and soul-chilling eyes that carry with it impending doom. Safe to say, I am now a believer in the paranormal. If you have made it to the end of the video, comment down below your favorite story or what gave you chills. Please give this video a like, subscribe, and feel free to clip your favorite moments to share with friends. It will truly help. I love you all, and until next time, farewell poets.